The 13th Annual Liberty Bowl is being brought to you by Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. By Holiday Inn, the most accommodating people in the world. And by Trans World Airlines. And now the Freedom Foundation of Valley Forge puts on its annual show here at the Liberty Bowl, the rekindling of the spirit of America with the combined bands of the University of Tennessee, of Arkansas, the sailors and Marines from nearby Millington Naval Air Technical Training Center, and the Boy Scouts of the Chickasaw Council. In addition to that, we have our special guest here, operatic star Marguerite Piazza. And the annual show, Rekindling of the Spirit of America. And 50,000 flags of colonial America passed out here tonight with the 13 stars, and they're all waving at this point. Now the band, the Tennessee band, will be playing Faith of Our Fathers and This Is My Country. Marguerite Piazza singing it, and the band will go from the religious cross into an anvil. Marguerite Piazza, a native of Memphis, who comes back each year to thrill these fans at the Liberty Bowl. And now the, the religious cross will move into the form of an anvil on the good iron, indicating the hard work, the sacrifice, the courage, and the self-reliance it took to make this country what it is. tribute to those strong men who cleared the land, built the tools, and established the commerce which laid the groundwork for the opportunities of today's generation. And now the Tennessee band, as you can hear in the background, playing the music, Shenandoah. And the band on the field is the Tennessee band. The Arkansas band is on the sideline and will join in the second chorus of This Land Is Your Land.
And now as the bands play, this land is your land, the Tennessee band forms the outline of the United States. and Marines from the nearby Millington Naval Air Technical Training Center and the Boy Scouts of the Chickasaw Council. Nearly 790 people out on the field here, almost 800 people here tonight. With this halftime and in just a moment, the lights of the stadium will go out and the aerial bomb will explode in a cascade of light and color. And as we come back, as you see, the 13 stars, the left corner, and the outline of the United States in the spirit of 76 up in the upper right-hand corner. given for 50,000 flags to be waved here in the stadium. And the aerial bombs burst overhead. are over. Coming up next, the second half and the score here at the Liberty Bowl is Arkansas 7. Came to this little place. Waiter says, try this. You'll like it. Watch this. Try it. You'll like it. But what is try it? You'll like it. So I tried it. Thought I was gonna die. Took two Alka-Seltzer. For headache and acid indigestion, no aspirin or antacid alone relieves you in as many ways as Alka-Seltzer for headache and acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer works. Try it, you'll like it. Aren't you glad you used Dial? Dial picks you up and takes you to where it's cool and where it's springtime. Then Dial lingers on to bring you home again. Still refresh, feeling fine. Don't you wish everybody did? Well, ladies and gentlemen, with a great first half of the football game and a spectacular halftime, the Liberty Bowl has come of age. The 13th annual Liberty Bowl. The two teams, the University of Tennessee Volunteers, back out on the near sideline. On the far side, as we look at the a more attractive young thing, the Arkansas cheerleader, her Razorbacks. The football team is on the far side. This is a record-breaking crowd here at Memphis Memorial Stadium of 51,410. And the statistics reflect how even the game has been with the score 7-7. to 7, 169 total yards for Arkansas against 149 for Tennessee. 36 offensive plays to 34. The surprising statistic, time of possession with Arkansas maintaining possession for 6 minutes and 47 seconds longer than Tennessee. 
But how'd you like that halftime? Well, I think, Chris, that uh, if you have any feeling at all about the background, the heritage, the tradition, and the future of our country, it just makes your heart beat a little faster and your blood a little warmer. Well, I know that America's number one football fan, President Nixon, enjoyed it. You can count on that. Tennessee will be receiving. It'll be George Hunt kicking from right to left. Arkansas receiving, and I said George Hunt was kicking off for Tennessee. Scores tied, and that's Jack Morris for Arkansas coming out to the 20 and spinning over to the 23-yard line. Well, let's see what Joe Ferguson, the junior quarterback, a potential All-America, can do with the Razorbacks now as we go into the second half. The Arkansas offensive line both teams using the same essential strategy against the same defensive pattern, faking inside to freeze the linebackers and then throwing behind them and faking inside to go wide. There's the offensive backfield for the University of Arkansas. Richardson 24, Sate 44, Jim Hodge who caught the touchdown pass number 22 on the 23-yard line of Arkansas, first down. Richardson, Saint blocking. And what lateral pursuit by the Tennessee defense Carl Johnson, 59 and 52, Jackie Walker, 57, Rotella was there too. And Walker came all the way across from his strong side linebacking position to make that great hit. Second down and eight from the 25, score time, 7-7. Seven, seven. We're in the very first minute of the second half. Ferguson, 91 yards on nine completion. Here's another one to Richardson. Great move by Rotella. He was blocked, but he came off the block and got over there to make the tackle. He had not made it. Uh, Richardson had some running room. Forward progress marked at the 28-yard line, a gain of three. So it brings up a third down and five for Joe Ferguson of Shreveport, Louisiana, who was considered the number one high school prospect in the country in 1969. 23 is Ettinger. The split end going out. And he finds Hodge, number 22. Conrad Graham making the tackle on the play. Let's watch the dual isolation again. Ferguson dropping back. There's the draw fake. As you can see, both backs staying in to freeze the linebackers. The linebackers have to respect it. Hodge taking the inside turn, looking for the ball as Ferguson releases it, and he throws it low to keep it in front of the secondary as they close. Hodge, six catches, 75 yards, and one touchdown. First and 10 at the 40 of Arkansas. Ferguson. Richardson. Graham, number 37, first there, along with John Waxter. Ferguson now has completed 11 of 13 or 85 percent of his passes 116 yards one touchdown we have a a roughing the passer penalty being marked off and that's the third big penalty against Tennessee they had uh, two personal foul penalties in the first half that kept Arkansas alive so it's a first and ten at the Tennessee 45 and if you just joined us uh, Ferguson's favorite receiver, Mike Repon, is not playing tonight because of an injury, number 26, but his replacement, 23, goes out on a pattern. Edinger, the ball is going in his direction. Overthrown. And at that time, Tennessee guessed correctly. They thought that Ferguson would throw. They had the big rush coming, man-to-man -man defense in the secondary. So it'll be a second down and 10 with 12 minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The score tied 7-7. You just joined us in the first quarter. The all, excuse me, bud. All right, All-American uh, strong side linebacker Jackie Walker coming in. Very good job of picking up the blitz by Mike Saint. But the pressure of the rest of the men on the rush forced him to throw before he was ready. Second down attempt. Edinger number 23 to the 35. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. It is. Bobby Majors making the tackle, and now 
the vaunted passing attack of Arkansas, eighth in the nation. And that was Ettinger just on the little hitch pattern. Uh, again, the inside fake, tying up Rotella, making it impossible for him to get out into the coverage. Ferguson, 12 of 15, good statistics, and so has she. I think. <laughs> I'm sure. From the 34, <laughs> first and 10. Ettinger. And the sophomore end is brought down by the Tennessee defense. Inside the 30 of the volunteers, Tom Bennett, 86, and on the play. We have a penalty, Chris, but I didn't uh, have much of an indication of what it was, and there's a little discussion here. <laughs> you think clip uh, when you have a screen pass called. Stepped off from the spot of the foul, bringing the ball back to the 48-yard line. And the penalty here indicating that we had an ineligible receiver, bud, downfield. On the screen pass, uh, the theory of the play is to try to get the ball out to the flat when you've taken the secondary back and then get your lineman swinging out in front of it. And there's always a tendency for the lineman to be a little over anxious to get across the line of scrimmage when the pass is being thrown. They must stay behind the line. All right. There is young Joe Ferguson. First and 25. Uh-oh. Interception. Bobby Majors. Ferguson was trying to hit Keith French, number 81, but Bobby Majors, a true All-America, brings it in. This year during the regular season, he intercepted three, and here's one in his first Liberty Bowl. I thought Hodge uh, was open on the play, Chris. Uh, Majors played it like Mickey Mantle used to play center field when that ball was in the air. Believe me, he went to it. A fine run back, setting up Tennessee at their own 40-yard line. First and 10. Score tied. Steve Chancey, who was injured in the second quarter, back in the Tennessee lineup, number 41. He was stopped by Danny Rhodes, 56, and Ronnie Jones, the defensive end, number 35. As you look at the offensive uh, group up front for Tennessee. Jim Eric. Maxwell, number 16, Chris, we mentioned in the first half, was the 14th quarterback when the season began, and Tennessee has not lost since he took over as a starter. Second down and seven from their own 43 with a score tied. Chancey again, number 41, carrying. Out of uh, white Arkansas jerseys, including 89, Revis. 87 is Jim Benton from Amarillo, Texas. And the gain to the 45, and Tennessee now has a third down and five. Doug Scheel is out, and Scott Finian, who was injured in the second quarter, is back in the lineup for the Arkansas defense, number 36, the right linebacker. Third and five. And Louis Campbell intercepts Maxwell. It was intended for love. No, Arkansas gets the ball. Two great college football teams, Chris, and so similar. Both secondaries with great speed, great mobility, reading the passer. This is going to go right down to the wire. Sc score tied at 7-7. Seven to seven. Throughout the holidays, it's the best of the colorful college bowl games here at ABC. With timeout at the Liberty Bowl. Again, the score, Arkansas 7, Tennessee 7. Tijuana Smalls, ten for the road, baby, for you, maybe, you know who you are, you know who you are, Tijuana Smalls, mellowed like wine, baby, for you, maybe, you know who you are, you know who you are. Tijuana Smalls, you don't have to inhale them to like them, ten small cigars, ten for the road. You said you wanted to uncomplicate your life. Remember? Start now with the Schick injector system. We designed it for better balance so it's more maneuverable, easier to control, 
because we believe a good, clean shave should be a simple, natural act. Schick Injector System. Simplify. A record-breaking crowd on a memorable night at Memphis Memorial Stadium. The Liberty Bowl, the 13th annual. The score is tied 7-7. to 10.43 to go in the third quarter. And a moment ago, Louis Campbell of Arkansas intercepted his eighth pass of the year. And Arkansas has the ball back. Ferguson had been intercepted previously. And now he has it at the 33-yard line. First down. Mike Saint, number 44, carrying it. 58 is the offensive center, Ron Rivard. 58 is also the defensive middle linebacker or middle guard, and boy, he's tough. And think 37 is the man that intercepted the pass. You can see those three linebackers all right together, Walker and Nettles. Look at Nettles as he closes, defeating Rivard's block to make the tackle. With the ball at the 35, Arkansas, second down and eight. What a rush. After knocking him down, Rotella picks him up. <laughs> you could tell they were coming, but they couldn't stop him. And Ferguson is limbering up his right arm. He came into the game uh, after being bruised in the right shoulder, and he's slowly coming back over to the Oval Arkansas huddle, bending over on the far side now, catching his breath, now coming in to tell the other ten Razorbacks what the play will be. To the far side, two wide receivers. We have Ettinger 23 and Hodge 22 on a third down and eight. Great speed on the part of Eddie Brown, the sophomore. Well, he again, Chris, read it perfectly. If uh, he had had a half a step more, the score would be 13 to 7 and going to 14. Brown is 25. You're getting a look at him now. 5'11", 175 pounds. Let's watch Ferguson faking to Saint. And he is hit very, very hard by Johnson. Bobby Majors awaits Tools kick. We're in the third quarter with the score tied. Fair catch called for at the 25-yard line. The punt traveled. 40 yards. Bobby Majors. Don't forget New Year's Day here on ABC, the 38th annual Sugar Bowl game featuring the Tigers of Auburn and the Heisman Trophy winner, Pat Sullivan, taking on the Sooners of Oklahoma and the Chevrolet Offensive Senior Player of the Year, Jack Mildren, whom you saw at halftime, and the Oklahoma Sooners, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, live from New Orleans, Louisiana. From the 25, Kurt Watson, senior fullback, carried on the play as Les Williams was in defensively along with 36, Scott Bennion. About a two-yard gain, second down and eight coming up. Maxwell, number 16, has completed eight of 16 passes. He's had a couple drops, too. Watson. Wow. Pretty move by Watson. And a pretty good belt by 21 Hogue. Well, Watson has got some speed in going wide. There you see the turnovers, bud. The penalties are about even. Tennessee with two personal fouls and Arkansas with a pass interference. So it's a third down and three now. The ball is at the 32 of Tennessee. Two potential receivers to the near side of the field, Emmon Love and Joe Thompson. Maxwell looking. Oh, look. Ronnie Jones, one of the pass rushers for the Arkansas defense. Let's see a replay of it. He's been tough all night. Here he is, number 35, Ronnie Jones. Watch him as he comes in. A little bit of an outside move and shaking off the block high as he goes in to try to block the pass that going up in the air enabled Maxwell to slip away from him momentarily but then help arrived on the scene on fourth and seven Bobby Majors punting Morris is deep 
and Majors really catches one. It's inside the 20. Morris brings it to the 25 to the 30. Breaks a shoe top tackle and is down at about the 36 yard line. Gary Thyler catching the shoe. A 53 yard punt by All American Bobby Majors as we have a timeout at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. The score Arkansas 7, Tennessee 7. How do you like my new Vega? Actually, this is a special display model opened up so you can see some of the unseen things that help to make Vega such an exceptional little car. The thick foam, for instance, that makes these buckets so incredibly comfortable. Big coil springs at every wheel to soften up the ride. An engine that's bigger than most little car engines, but every bit as stingy with a gallon of gas. Fade resistant front disc brakes, protective steel beams in both doors, a double panel steel roof that adds to the strength and quiet of the car. Now you see them, now you don't. And because they don't show, Chevy could easily have left them out. But then Vega would have been just another little car. And who wants just another little car? Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. Eight minutes, 27 seconds remaining in the third quarter, 7-7, seven to seven, Arkansas, Tennessee in the Liberty Bowl. First down for Joe Ferguson and the Razorbacks. He has Morton 33, St. 44, and Hodge 22 in the backfield. Morton. That 175-pounder from Dallas can move. Bobby Majors making the stop, but not before Morton had gotten to the 36 of Tennessee. And a great block that time by Mike Saint. Uh, he simply had to get out and run. They mowed everybody down. 29 yards. In the lineup, we have Russ Garber, the senior full fullback from Riverton, Kansas, replacing Dickie Morton, who had that nice run of 29 yards. He can catch his breath. He'll be back soon. Mike Saint, lefty, lofts one, look out. Double coverage on Jack Ettinger, number 23. The ball batted away by Danny Jeffries and Bobby Major. There's Ettinger. The option uh, pass run off the fake, and we're getting a, another big penalty against Tennessee. Another personal foul. There's the personal foul signal. And he gave another signal along with it, Chris, uh, hitting with a forearm. So an elbow was caught, and you see it. Uh oh. That's a uh, rather sharp, hard to blow. So the ball is now at the Tennessee 24, first down. Martin back in the lineup. Carries. You see 44 and white. Mike Saint trying to uh, block for 33. Morton as Nettles and Johnson make the stop near the 20 yard line. So it'll be second down and six. Tennessee scored first. Rudder going in, capping a 55 yard drive. Then beyond the midpoint of the second quarter, Arkansas went 66 yards. A pass Ferguson to Hodge, 16 yards in the score. Arkansas second and six. So Saint carries on the play. Maybe uh, a little disagreement here, Chris. Yes, there will be. <laughs> Tom Bennett, number 86, in on the tackle. And it's a first and goal for the Razorbacks. The ball is between the eight and nine here at Memphis Memorial Stadium, which has been alive long before the opening kickoff as a rivalry is beginning tonight. Only the second time that Tennessee and Arkansas have met. They met in 1907. This is their second game here in the Liberty Bowl. Dickie Martin. Well, that 
medals and majors, how they do close on the ball carrier. Let's see where Simpson McDuff, the referee, has spotted the ball. It's at the seven. Second down and goal. Morton is out. John Richardson, number 24, is in the Arkansas lineup. Hodge comes to the near side of the field, and Arkansas goes into the wishbone formation. Number 25, Eddie Brown. Hard play. They had all three options covered and came up with the ball. Let's watch it again. Here's the first fake. Saint hitting to the inside. Ferguson keeps the ball. There's the pitch. One can't quite hold it. The ball bounces on the ground, and Eddie Brown is there to make the recovery for Tennessee. Two interceptions, now fumble recovery. Tennessee from their own 11. Kurt Watson upended at the line of scrimmage. And uh, doing the work was number 87 for Arkansas. The middle linebacker Jim Benton from Amarillo joined by Ronnie Jones, the defensive right end. This is Jones, the defensive right end for Arkansas, who's having a sensational night. That's the way to close them off. Get your head in front. Tennessee, second and ten. Slot formation to the far side. Steve Chancy, number 41, carrying up to about the 15-yard line. These Scott Finian was there. These teams have been playing a terrific tempo since the opening kickoff, and I have the feeling, Chris, the tempo increases as the clock continues to move. Third down and six. Number 35 that you're looking at is Ronnie Jones, the defensive end, 6'2", 200 pounds, but quick. What an effort by Steve Chancy. Campbell on the tackle for Tennessee. It's a first down. The score is still tied, 7-7. Seven to seven. It was tied with 4 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the second quarter here in the Liberty Bowl. Total yards in this quarter, Tennessee 21, Arkansas 77. Now from the 24, first down, Sylvie to the far side. Watson. Well, you can tell why Tennessee likes him, Chris. Uh, sure, he's going to lose two yards and wound up making three. And of course, he is a senior, so this is uh, the last game that he'll be playing for his alma mater. And with broken ribs, uh, November 27th, in the Vanderbilt game, uh, takes a little courage on his part, and the decision makers to have him in there. And the great athletes do recover quickly. So now from the 27, second down and seven, Tennessee. There he is again. Isn't he a tiger? Oh, marvelous! No wonder he has surpassed the great rushing record of the immortal Beatty Feathers. That's supposed to be a limp leg situation, Chris, where the tackler hits his legs and he just rides over it and keeps his feet, but uh, he's got power all the way. There's nothing limp about it. So with the ball now at the 37, thanks to the efforts of fullback Kurt Watson, who may be smarting as a result of the ribs, but is happy. Thompson and Sylvie to the near side of the field. Watson again. And you can hear the uh, pads popping, bud, all the way up here. That was David Rivas who simply closed and met it square. About a two-yard gain, so it'll be second down and eight. And they're running the ball as effectively as Tennessee is. The defensive secondary begins to feel they've got to get up and help. And when that happens, of course, they become mentally vulnerable to the pass. Fast-moving third quarter, about three minutes to go. In Arkansas territory, Joe Thompson, the senior from Savannah, Tennessee, is down at about the 48, and it's a Tennessee 
First down with a score tied. Let's watch it again. Joe Thompson on a down and out pattern away from the fake. The Arkansas defense moved to the left of the screen. And Jones riding through. And as Maxwell delivers the ball, he's hit. Back live, Sylvie is a flanker to the far side on a first and ten from the Arkansas, 47. Uh-oh. Loose ball, Arkansas recovers. 36 is Scott Finian. Jim Maxwell losing the football. So we've had an interception by each team, a fumble recovery by each side, and it's just testimony to the way they're hitting and fired up. And that's one, of course, that uh, all coaches just shake their head about because the exchange between the center and the quarterback is supposed to be an automatic exchange. You just assume that you don't ever fumble the ball there, but as the tempo rises and as you've got those three linebackers moving around the center, it can happen. So from the 46 of Arkansas, first down, Ferguson, the quarterback. <laughs> Dickie Martin, number 33, up near midfield, perhaps into... Tennessee Territory. That fumble that uh, Arkansas had uh, prior to the Tennessee fumble was at a spot on the field where it could have been a 10 to 7 lead uh, with Bill McCard, their great field goal kicker, easily within range. Bobby Nichols reports back into the Arkansas lineup, number 27. So let's see what this play will be. Sending Ettinger to the left. A second down and five at the 49. Richardson, look at this. Eddie Brown making a fine tackle at the Tennessee 30. And the essential strategy of Arkansas continues to work. The inside fake freezing the linebackers. And if you get a block on the corner man, as they did there, the screen passes up. Following the 19-yard play, here are the Razorbacks from the Southwest Conference. First and 10 at the 30 of Tennessee. Mike Saint carries Jackie Walker, joined by number 57, Jamie Rotella, on the tackle. It looks like it's so open in there with that middle guard dropped off that... Uh, the three linebackers, if they read properly, can close. Uh, let's take a look at it, and you'll see what I mean. This is Walker. He's back off the line of scrimmage, but he reads it properly, and he comes through, and no one lays a glove on him as he makes the tackle. Five tackles for Walker, four assists. Second down and eight from the 28. Arkansas with the ball. Mike Saint, the junior, from Texarkana, Arkansas. And, of course, what you're hoping for, Chris, is the linebackers will read uh, the defensive offensive halfbacks as they did that time. Uh, Nettles moved to the outside. So did Walker with Dickie Morton's fake, which set up the play. Frank Broyles on the far side of the field, the Arkansas coach and his staff looking on now as the ball is at the 19 of Tennessee. First down for the Razorbacks. Oh, he is quick. Dickie Martin, first-year man, number 33. And a little misdirection, too. And it's a nine-yard gain, second down and one. Time running out in the third quarter with the score tied. At the end of the third quarter, here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, the score, Arkansas 7, Tennessee 7. You may think you're stuck with a lemon when all you're really stuck with is a dirty carburetor because that's all it may take to make your engine run rough and lose power. But the solution is here. New STP double power gasoline treatment. Power to clean with power to burn. Add a can next time you fill up. You'll really feel the difference. Polar flavor is here. A world of polar flavor. Polar
pure flavor has made Black Label the world's leading internationally brewed beer. Try it. Welcome to the world of fine Black Label beer. Mabel, Black Label. Enter the lair of the octopus on the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau tomorrow night. For Arkansas, the 13th bowl appearance in their history of football. For Tennessee, the 19th, the seventh bowl appearance in a row. Now it's the Tennessee defense that's being tested by the Razorbacks. The beginning of the fourth quarter, second and one at the Tennessee 10. And Joe Ferguson hoping for a little less cheering. And I always like to see someone like Jackie Walker signaling to his own fans to please be quiet and... Uh, give the opponent uh, the even break that you'd expect them to give us. Ferguson will be working with 33 Morton, Mike Saint 44, and Hodge 22, a flanker. Edinger at the bottom of your screen there on the left is number 23. Mike Saint trying for the first down. Kelson blocking ahead, number 78. 6'4", 240 pounds. Carl Johnson on the tackle. They needed that much yardage for the first down. In the third quarter statistics, Arkansas beginning to have a little bit of a superiority. They've run 55 plays to 46, made 107 more yards, and they're running close to doubling the first downs and the time of possession clearly in favor of Arkansas. The turnovers, Arkansas has lost the ball once on fumbles and been intercepted twice. Tennessee has had two turnovers, one fumble and one interception. And it's a first and goal for the Razorbacks at the nine of Tennessee. Tennessee scored first in the first quarter. Arkansas scored with 4-11 to go in the second quarter. It's been tied ever since. And now the Razorbacks, who started this drive at the 46, their own, have reached the nine of Tennessee. Ettinger at the left bottom of your screen. Saint and Morton, the setbacks behind Ferguson. Dickie Morton, number 33. Goal line defense, you've got to guess what they're going to do because if you try to stop everything, you probably don't stop anything. And that time, Tennessee guessed on the run inside, and they were right. 59, Johnson, the defensive right end, seems to be everywhere tonight for the Tennessee defense. And he, was, on that play, was joined by the defensive tackle, Frank Howell. And as you see, the ball is at the hash mark, the seven. Second and goal. Now in the backfield, Morton 33, Saint 44, Richardson 24, so they go into the wishbone. Bobby Majors covering Bobby Nichols, number 27 on the play. They're supposed to take the running fake, Chris, but nobody did. They had it covered perfectly. So it'll be a third down and goal. Each team has tried a field goal and failed. McClard tried one from 33 yards. Hunt tried one for Tennessee from 38. And again, Joe Ferguson stepping back from his center, Ron Rivard. In the formation, Hodge, 22, is to the far side. 
And what looked like a deep wishbone formation now is a little more normal. John Richardson. The old belly play, Chris, the inside double fake, and Richardson going behind that strong blocking. Little decision here for Frank Royals. They started this series after the first down at the nine. So now they have reached the Tennessee two and one of the great defensive teams in the nation. As it's back to the wall at their own two, and this is a fourth down play, but here comes Bill McClard, a oh. native of Norman, Oklahoma. Arkansas has taken time out. They were a little bit in doubt as to whether or not they wanted to go for the field goal or go for the touchdown. Yes, each week during the holiday season, watch ABC for college football with timeout. The score, Arkansas 7, Tennessee 7. This is when you really get to know your car insurance company. When you run into trouble. Will they be there? Will they take care of things? Will you get a fast, fair settlement? You will if your car is insured by State Farm. Just like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. State Farm is there. What do you want me to say? My world's different from yours. The men in it are different. They smell real, not perfumey. They know I dig English leather lime, so they pour it on, and I love it. All my men wear English leather. Every one of them. English leather. Cologne, aftershave, deodorant, and shave cream. After driving 52 yards, this is the 10th play on fourth down and goal. McClard will try one from inside the 10, plus the 10 of the end zone, a severe angle. It's up and good. A 19-yard tiebreaker by Bill McClard, number 19 who once in his college career kicked a 60-yard field goal. 10 to 7. Monday night, NCAA football. What a week, ABC Sports. This Saturday, Christmas Day at 5 Eastern and Pacific, 4 Central Time. You'll have the opportunity to see ABC's Wide World of Sports anniversary show, which was originally aired last April. We'll be featuring some of the many memorable moments that have made sports history over the past 10 years. Wide World of Sports with its host, Jim McKay. We look at Bobby Majors. Following a 19-yard field goal by Arkansas, they lead 10 to 7 with 13.09 remaining in the game. McClard, who kicked the field goal, will be booting it from right to left. 59 degrees, very little wind, not a cloud in the sky here in Memphis. Bobby Majors brings it back out to the 30-yard line. Number 44 and the Tennessee Orange. He was stopped by Steve Cox. And the pressure now squarely on the Tennessee offense. They've been a great defensive team. The 10 points of Arkansas are just about the average. The Tennessee gave up 9.8 points per game during the regular season. A slot formation to the far side is split into the near side. From the 29, Maxwell first down. Ooh, Steve Chancy. One of the players for Arkansas getting up 52, Archie Bennett of Millington, Tennessee, playing for Arkansas. Those tackles are lined up on the inside shoulder of the offensive tackles. They do close to the inside about 80% of the time. That time, Bennett's close was on the perfect angle to stop the play. Chancy, who was injured earlier, or I should say in the second quarter, shaken up again, and he'll uh, get a rest on the near sideline. He's replaced by number 43, George Sylvie. Second and 10, Tennessee from their own 29. Love and Thompson going out. A deflected pass intercepted by the Razorbacks. Louis Campbell, who led the Southwest Conference in interceptions with seven, gets his second of the night. Every team practices what we call a tip drill, where in practice you have one man tip the ball and other people come across to try to get to it, and that's where the practice paid off. 
So Arkansas leading as a result of a 19 yard field goal a few moments ago. Get the ball in Tennessee territory at the 43 first down. And that's by far the best field position they've had on an exchange all night. Their previous best field position was their own 35 on an exchange. Joe Ferguson, number 11, who has thrown one touchdown pass. That to Jim Hodge. Ready to go. John Richardson, number two. Three, four. This is one of those breakthrough points in the game, Chris. When you're coaching, you're always looking for the time where you might really break through and sort of establish the superiority. If Arkansas can move it here, that will happen. If Tennessee stops them, it's still anybody's game. Second down at six from the 39. Each team with uh, three errors. Each team two interceptions, and each has lost a fumble. Second and six from the 39. Arkansas in Tennessee territory. Hodge. Off as a flanker. And the tight end, Bobby Nichols, catches it and moves it inside the 15. First down. Beautiful fake by Ferguson. The fake was to the right of the screen. The throw back against the green was wide open. Bobby Nichols from Tulsa, Oklahoma, carrying the ball after the catch inside the 15. Let's call it the 14. As Arkansas leads 10 to 7, coming up to the 11 minute mark of the ball game, the 13th Liberty Bowl. And what a success it is. The wishbone. Richardson. Oh, no. Conrad Graham. Number 37. The wishbone is supposed to be their power formation to use inside the goal, close to the goal line, and get the blocking of the extra back rather than having him out as a flanker. But uh, with one exception, uh, Tennessee has defensed the wishbone perfectly. Conrad Graham, who ran for a touchdown against Penn State. That was the last game the Volunteers played. Arkansas's last game was way back November 20th in a victory over Texas Tech. Here are the Razorbacks, second and 17. Screening it out to Richardson. Diving out of bounds at about the 13. Getting most of that lost yardage back. Nettles and Rotella laterally for Tennessee. We've watched, talked about Nettles all evening. There he is staying inside, looking for the inside fake. And then when he sees the ball is not coming to the inside, using his amazing pursuit and speed to get out and make the tackle on the screen pass. 220 pounder, but he is some football player. Five tackles, six assists tonight. And the play was stopped at the 12. So now it's going to be a third down and eight. Dickie Morton's 13, David Allen from Athens, Georgia. So with a fourth down coming up, Bill McClard, who is one for two in field goals, is back in the lineup, and uh, he's making preparations to kick it just inside the 20, plus the 10 of the end zone. Let's call it a 30-yard attempt. Mike Kelton centers the ball to number 17 rusher. The kick is up, 30 yards, and good. 13-7 with 8.51 to go in the game. Timeout at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. The score, Arkansas 13, Tennessee 7. This is Joel Aldred for General Motors with word on what GM has done and is doing to help solve the emissions problem in automobiles. Some gases used to escape from the crankcase, so GM now has a system that sends them back to the engine for burning. Gasoline vapors also escape from the fuel tank and carburetor, so GM installed a system that returns most of them to the engine to be burned. Other engine improvements help consume fuel more completely for fewer byproducts. Although these changes have produced significant reductions, what about the emissions that remain? Well, here's one system GM is exploring. 
a catalytic converter. When exhaust gases from the engine enter the converter, they would pass through a catalyst and be converted into harmless water vapor and carbon dioxide, the gas that makes bubbles in soda pop. It's still experimental, but one thing is certain. General Motors promised to get the car out of the pollution problem, and General Motors is doing it. These are the volunteer cheerleaders. So at the moment, their football heroes are trailing 13 to seven with 8.51 to go in the ball game. Arkansas taking the lead on two field goals by Bill McClard. McClard now will kick to the volunteers, Bobby Majors and Steve Chancier deep. Majors to the far side. 13-7, Tennessee will try to come back. Bobby Majors at the 10, looking for a hole. It closed on him at the 24. Doug Scheel, one of the tacklers, we should point out, Chris, the score is 13 to 7, and Hunt, the great place kicker for Tennessee, is 31 for 31 on conversions. So if they can get the ball across the goal line, the odds are pretty good. It'll be 14 to 13. And it appears that a Razorback heard on the last play. Eight minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. The 13th Liberty Bowl. It's a record crowd of 51,410 fans. A game that has been sold out for weeks. Number 57 of Arkansas, Jim Bronner, shaking up on that last play. We hope he'll be okay. He was trying to uh, move Chris to get off the field to save his team the timeout, but uh, just couldn't quite make it. Uh, I'm sure that he'll be all right when he gets a few seconds to have his head clear. We talked about holiday season Monday night sports. Next Monday night here on ABC, it'll be the North-South Shrine game from Miami at 9 Eastern. Featuring some of the top collegiate players from the 71 season. And then the following Monday on January 3rd, NBA basketball from Madison Square Garden in New York. The Milwaukee Bucks against the New York Knickerbockers. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And Hall of Famer Bill Russell will be doing the color commentary. We'll join him at the Garden in New York for the first in the long series of NBA games of the week. Sui Pape. And that's a uh, little Sue, as they call her in Arkansas, but this is the blown up version, the big doll of little Sue. Well, to Tennessee fans, that music is most familiar. And with the orange and white pom poms in uh, predominance here, especially to our left. Tennessee, ninth ranked in the nation. Arkansas, 18th ranked. Tennessee with the ball. Maxwell opening up. Lofting one. Oh, this could be trouble. He was out of. Did he get it? If he did, it's Louis Campbell's third interception of the night. The Southwest Conference interception leader, the regular season was seven, has pulled in three tonight. He read that one perfectly and fielded the ball exceptionally well. Let's watch the replay again. Watch Campbell as he moves across now. Sylvie, but he has no chance. The ball is high. Campbell picked it off perfectly. So from the 49, Joe Ferguson gives to John Richardson. Arkansas is going to do their dead level best here to put McCard once more in field goal position. Bronner, who was injured a few moments ago with an ice pack on his neck, seems to be okay. He's out of the lineup, of course. There is Mr. Campbell, who has three interceptions here in the second half. And he has set a Liberty Bowl record. The previous record was held by the great Dick Hope of Penn State in 1960 of two. So on a second down and eight, Mike Saint carries for the Razorbacks. Nettles and Rotella. Two familiar names on the telecast tonight. And <laughs> add Jackie Walker to that and Bobby Majors. Gain of four. It'll be third down and four. And this is a big down for Tennessee. 
Arkansas making the first down here. They'll be very close to McCard's field goal range. Just reached the midpoint of the final quarter. Third and four. Ferguson screens it. Richardson. More than enough for the Arkansas first down. Graham forcing 24 Richardson out of bounds. And a great call, Chris, with the third down four. I look for some sort of a running play. And he showed pass quickly to set up the screen. Then got some great blocks on the outside. So controlling the ball now, the Razorbacks who have gone ahead here in the ball game, kicking two field goals, both by Bill McClard, one of 19 yards, and the other of 30 yards. And with the ball at the 36, first down in Tennessee land. Mike Saint, 44. Moving across, Tom Reed blocking number 74, and Frank Howell and Rotella on the tackle as we see the back of Coach Frank Broyles, a native of Decatur, Georgia, a graduate of Georgia Tech. And Arkansas continues to dominate ball possession. They've had the ball 33 minutes and 10 seconds against 20 minutes and 17 seconds. Four yard gain, second down and six for the Razorbacks. Edinger at the bottom of your screen. Dickie Morton, 83 at his shoe tops, Frank Powell of Columbia, Tennessee, and John Wagster, number 67. Ball at the 31. It'll be a third down and five, bud. And the Arkansas team appears to feel that they've got McCard within field goal range here. They're certainly going to try to make this first down, but they're happy to see the clock clicking and hoping that they will not lose possession of the ball before McCart has the chance to put that field goal on the board to put them out of range. Third down coming up. Couldn't quite hang on. Bobby Nichols. So it brings up a fourth down and five. And the line of scrimmage is the 31. Ferguson has gone to the air 23 times. He has completed 15. One touchdown to Jim Hodge. And here's a man, two of three in field goals. The all-time kick scoring leader in the history of NCAA college football. Here's a kick now that will come from the, let's call it the 37 plus the 10 of the end zone, 47 yards, Bill McLeod. Kick is up. It's good. The record holder, Bill McClard, a 47-yarder. Marker is down. Holding, called against the kicking team. We've still got a ball game. Five minutes, 45 seconds to go. A little hard now to get reorganized for Arkansas. You've been in ecstasy with a nine-point lead, and now you're back with a six-point lead, uh, getting ready to punt the ball. That's Frank Broyles. And he's trying to get a little semblance out of chaos. So it's going to be a fourth down, even though McClard hit on that 47-yard field goal. The holding penalty nullifies it. Penalty accepted. The down is replayed, and Drew Tool will do the punting. As Bobby Majors is deep for Tennessee. 13 to 7. What a game. And a fine punt by Drew Tool of Arkansas. 46 yarder. Tennessee now. Perhaps their last chance from the 20. First down. It all started in 1869. Now each week it's college football here on ABC. The score Arkansas 13. Tennessee. Love can be quiet, but it's never asleep. There's always something moving. I would feel that even if I were not Catherine the nerve. But it's hard for me to talk about, especially in English. I just need that in love. I need that wonder. Chanel number no. five bath powder and spray cologne, because he needs wonder too. You don't have to ask for it. He knows what you want, Chanel. 
Unbearable. The Qantas 747 to Australia. Not the old 747. The new 747B. With a squiggly staircase, a bigger lounge, a quieter ride. <laughs> I hate Qantas. Though being down 13 to 7, the Tennessee Volunteer Rooters are hoping now. McClard of Arkansas hitting on a 47-yard field goal nullified because his teammates were holding. Tennessee after the punt, first and 10 from the 20. Maxwell handing off to his veteran fullback, Kurt Watson, for two or three yards. Tennessee is trailing 13 to 7. And the pressure squarely on the Arkansas defense. They had the game wrapped up. The the holding penalty nullified the field goal, and a touchdown by Tennessee will give them the ball game. Slot formation to the far side, Thompson and Sylvie. Watson trying to get outside. No chance. Number 36, Scott Benian, the junior from Bishop, Texas, and Don Wonderlay from Fort Scott, Kansas, number 72. Back to loss of the yard to the 22, so it'll be third down and eight for the Volunteers. And the Arkansas defense thus far this half has really been nothing short of sensational. Tennessee has made only 38 yards thus far in the second half. Thompson and Sylvie to the far side are at the top of your screen on a third and eight. Look out. That was Jim Maxwell carrying the ball. Not enough yardage for the first down. Scott Benning is 36 and white. He made a great move, though, against Ronnie Jones. Jones was in about to nail him, and he moved it forward just enough to escape it. So with the ball at the 26, it's going to be a fourth down and four. So Tennessee will punt four minutes, 30 seconds. Left in the game, number 80 is Jack Morris. Bobby Major's punt is in the air. Morris looking at it at his own 30. Good kick coverage on the play by the Volunteers. 44-yard punt by Bobby Majors. Tom Johnson, who snapped the ball to Majors, made the tackle. I'm not sure I'd recommend handling that punt, Chris. It looks to me like a fair catch time. Don't forget New Year's Day here on ABC, the 38th annual Sugar Bowl featuring the Tigers of Auburn against the Sooners of Oklahoma, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, live and in color from New Orleans, bud, and that's going to be another thriller. Great running attack of Oklahoma, featuring Jack Mildred at quarterback against the passing of the Heisman Trophy winner, Pat Sullivan. And the catching of his teammate, Terry Beasley. So from about the 30, Arkansas with the ball leading 13-7. Mike St. carrying, and they would like to control it for four minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. I'll be very surprised if they can do it on the ground. Tennessee is going to play run, and they'll probably be right playing run. Nettles and Rotella again in on the tackle. Gain of two, so it'll be second down and eight as you look at Joe Ferguson looking to the bench, perhaps getting a signal from his coach. And what an extraordinary junior from Shreveport, number 11, Ferguson. 59% completions for the season, 65% tonight. Mike Saint running against the Tennessee defense for possibly three yards on the play. 59 getting up is Carl Johnson. 52 getting up is Jackie Walker, one of the Tennessee captains. And as you see, the ball is at the 35. So it'll be third down and five for Arkansas, leading 13 to seven. Three minutes, 11 seconds left in the Liberty Bowl. Split in and an outside flanker is the formation. Ferguson, and he screens it to Richardson. Doesn't appear to be quite enough. Was there a loose ball? Yes, a fumble. Uh, we'll wait for the official to designate. Uh, there are a lot of orange uh, officials lot, there, Chris. A lot of arms <laughs> covered with orange. A lot of orange officials. That was Rotella, Jamie Rotella, who 
was in on the play. And let's see what the ruling is. It is ruled a fumble recovery. Carl Witherspoon from Knoxville, where the university is situated, recovered the ball at the Arkansas 37 with 250 to go in the game and trailing by six. And if we had had a Democratic vote by the people around the ball, Chris, it was solidly Tennessee. All this from Memphis, from the 37, Maxwell. <laughs> Steve Chancey carrying against the determined Arkansas defense. You know, four of the nation's premier defensive linemen were named uh, finalists today for the Vince Lombardi Award. They'll be honored January 14th in Houston, Texas, at the second annual dinner. The linemen, Ron Esty of LSU, Rich Glover of Nebraska, Larry Jacobson of Nebraska, and Walt Patulski of Notre Dame. Maxwell throwing. Caught by the tight end, Gary Thaler, at the 16th. First down, Tennessee. 2.16 to go. Let's watch Thaler in the isolated camera. Here he is breaking down the field. The fake was to the right of the screen. Throw back as he breaks to the outside. Campbell comes across, but he could not get in front of the ball as Tyler makes the reception. That time remaining at the 16-yard line of Arkansas. First down, Tennessee. They trail by six. And what a touchdown by senior Kurt Watson. And they love their all-time rushing leader. What a display of emotion, happiness in the stands and on the field for the volunteers. Kurt Watson, number 31. The score is tied. And Bud, you brought up the point that George Hunt has kicked 30 of 30 extra points this year. Let's watch a touchdown again. There's the inside fake and the pitch. Great blocking by Tennessee. And a great move by Watson into the end zone. Jim Maxwell will hold. Hunt's kick is up and Tennessee leads. One minute, 56 seconds left in the game. Tennessee has command for the moment as we have a timeout at the Liberty Bowl. The score, Tennessee 14, Arkansas 13. Most cameras can only make a little face this big when you always wanted to get it this big. Well, now it's easy with Polaroid's 1995 Big Shot Land Camera. Every shot this camera takes is a close-up portrait. And so simple, it's almost impossible to goof. Polaroid's Big Shot, strictly color. Yes, that was 1995. What would you say if I offered you a Tipperillo? What would you say if I took it? <laughs> Do you think there'll really be a lady president? Lady president? No. Woman president. What do you think of the idea of skirts getting longer? I'm not sure if I like the idea of skirts. Tipperillo, maybe we started something. All the thrills of college football here on Monday night, the Liberty Bowl on the foot of George Hunt. Tennessee has taken the lead following a Watson touchdown. 14-13, a minute 56 to go. The kick by Hunt, Jack Morris, decides to down it in his own end zone and let's see the great effort of senior fullback Kurt Watson scoring for Tennessee. There's the inside fake to freeze the middle of the defense. Perfect pitch out by Maxwell. A great block on the corner by Sylvie. And watch Watson turn on the speed here. And watch him as he cuts back. Avoiding Taylor and moving into the end zone for the touchdown. Gary Thyler throwing a nifty block helping Watson to maybe the happiest touchdown of his three varsity years at Tennessee. Now, Arkansas, they can get close enough for their field goal kicker. They have a first and 10 at their 20, a bullet, and an interception. Icing, 
No, it was not in control of the Tennessee player. Jackie Walker nearly pulled in a pass intended for Jack Ettinger, number 23. Let's take a look at it on the isolated camera. Ettinger running the inside pattern. And Walker did not quite hold it. He had his hands on it, but you could see it hit the ground. Joe Ferguson, 16 of 25, with a minute 47 to go. 180 yards, one touchdown pass. That to Jim Hodge. Now he's faced with a second and 10 from his own 23. Hodge to the far side of the field. Ettinger to the near side. Here's Ferguson. And he finds Ettinger across the 30 at about the 33. Officials waving their arms. Clock is stopped with a minute 37 to go. It's a first down for the Razorbacks. This and they are ready. Ettinger again on the little inside pattern. From the 33. A minute 28 to go. A jump pass. And beautifully executed up to the 39. Caught by Ettinger. I believe that Arkansas has only one timeout remaining. They need to move the ball about another 25 yards to put McCard in field goal range. Clock is running. We're coming up to the one minute mark. Wow. Tension here is unbelievable. Ettinger and Hodge to the near side of the field. Second and four. Two fakes and a long pumping throw and an interception by Tennessee. Eddie Brown. Just taking his time. The clock is running. 43 seconds left. So Eddie Brown has a fumble recovery for the Tennessee defense tonight. And now a game-saving interception. And if you simply hang tough, Chris, uh, it's the spirit of Tennessee. Spirit that they were out of the game. Uh, but they had to made 38 yards prior to recovering the fumble. And then they went 37 yards in two plays for the score. And they just received another 15 yards uh, with a penalty against Arkansas. Personal foul penalty as we look at 30-year-old head coach Bill Battle. Coached by Bear Bryant at Alabama, at one time a graduate assistant at Oklahoma under Bud Wilkinson. And here is his quarterback, Maxwell, who was a fourth stringer, Bud, earlier in the season. And Tennessee uh, has won its last six games, coming in here with a 9-2 and two record, ranked ninth in the nation. And Kurt Watson, who scored the six points that tied the ball game, and then with Hunt's extra point, was tackled by Danny Rhodes, number 56, on the play. More yardage against Arkansas. Another personal foul, face mask in this case. And as you see, the ball is inside the 10 at the 8. First and goal, 34 seconds remaining. Tennessee leading 14-13. Tennessee with the ball. Watson. Spinning for two yards to the six, bringing up second and goal. Clock is running. Ten seconds left in the 13th annual Liberty Bowl. Very successful, and a lot of people that deserve credit. Timmy Treadwell, Don Drinker, John Dobbs, Bill McElroy, and most of all, the executive director who originated the game in Philadelphia 13 years ago, Bud Dudley. Tennessee wants to put more points on the board. They called the timeout to kill the clock. Uh, you can see how close they are to the goal line. Second and goal, six seconds to go. Watson 
carrying on the play, and he was thrown for a loss as the flag is down. But time has expired. Tennessee, after winning in the Sugar Bowl last year, is a victor in the Liberty Bowl this year. Next Monday night, the North-South game, an all-star contest from Miami, Florida, the following Monday night, January 3rd, the Knicks and the Bucks from Madison Square Garden. And of course, on January 1st, the Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma and Auburn is Bill Battle is looking around for his Arkansas counterpart, Frank Broyles. So it's 21 victories for Bill Battle in two years at Tennessee and only three losses, but they really played a magnificent game. Uh, Arkansas began to take control about midway through the second quarter. They kept control until they had the fumble, which set Arkansas up in business on the Tennessee, rather, up in business on the Arkansas 37-yard line from which they scored in two plays and the extra point giving them the win. The final score, Tennessee 14, Arkansas 13. We'll be back in a moment. America. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. In the years ahead, we see America growing in many different ways. That's why we've moved into different kinds of investments, not just stocks, but bonds, real estate financing, a lot of different ways to put your money to work. America. Merrill Lynch is bullish on America. Is here, a world of fuller flavor. Fuller flavor has made Black Label the world's leading internationally brewed beer. Try it. Welcome to the world of fine Black Label beer. Label, Black Label. Well, the press here tonight at the Liberty Bowl has voted the most valuable player award to Joe Ferguson, the quarterback of the Razorbacks of Arkansas. His team didn't win by a point tonight, but Joe, you played a magnificent game. And right here to make the presentation to you is General William Westmoreland, Chief of Staff of the Army. General? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to present the William G. Leftridge Jr. Memorial Trophy to Joe Ferguson as the outstanding player the Liberty Bowl game. It was my great fortune to have known the late Lieutenant Colonel Bill Lefwich of the United States Marine Corps. Bill Lefwich uh, was a dedicated uh, officer. He was selfless. He had uh, exceptionally high character and an extraordinary devotion to his country. I can think of uh, no more fitting personality to have his name on this trophy uh, presented every year to the outstanding player. And Joe, it's my pleasure to present this to you at this time and to congratulate you on an outstanding game. I'd just like to congratulate Tennessee on playing a real fine ball game. They've got one of the most finest defenses in uh, the nation, I'm sure. And their offense did a real fine job. Uh, we made some mistakes, and we, they won the ball game, and they deserve it. So I want to congratulate them. Well said. And a fine trophy. Thank you very much. Okay, Joe Ferguson was named as the outstanding player of the game tonight. And just keep in mind that Joe Ferguson here, along with many of his teammates, will be back for the season of 1972, and there's always 72 ahead, Joe. We're looking forward to 72. We've got a few seniors leaving, and we're going to be powerful, I hope. I think you're going to be mighty tough. We get a little, we're going to have some dedication, and we're going to be there. All right, Joe, fine. So thank you, General Westmoreland, for being with us tonight. Joe Ferguson, now back to you, Chris Shankle. And thank you very much, Bill Fleming. Well, the Tennessee fans are happy here in West Tennessee, in the river city of Memphis, and of course back in Knoxville, which is the site of the University of Tennessee campus. I'm sure they're pleased, but in Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, less happiness. Now we get down to Bill Fleming again. All right, right here, right now, Bill Battle, the coach of Tennessee, is with me. And, of course, he's a very happy coach indeed. Bill, come on up on this platform. 
Maybe you can cross over here on the other side. We have a huge trophy here to be presented by Mr. Robert D. Lund, General Sales Manager of the Chevrolet Motor Division. And it, it truly is a replica of the of the Liberty Bowl Stadium. Bob, if you'd like to make the presentation, we have uh, some of the seniors here and some of the co-captains, Jackie Walker, et cetera. Coach Battles and uh, captains, it's a, it's a real pleasure on behalf of Chevrolet to present this magnificent trophy to you. And certainly I want to congratulate you on having played a, a marvelous football game and bringing to a wonderful conclusion a, a magnificent 1971 football season. Coach, congratulations on a great year. Well, thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure for us to accept this in behalf of some great football players that represent the University of Tennessee and we thank a great educational institution. We're very proud and feel very fortunate to have beaten a fine Arkansas team. And we have had a wonderful time at the Liberty Bowl. This is a first class place to be and we're certainly proud to be here. And I'm sure happy to get this trophy. From Chevrolet again, congratulations, Coach Battles. Bill, I, I hope you have a mighty big case for that trophy. It's a good one indeed. All right, now let's go back upstairs to Chris and Bud. Once again, the final score, Tennessee 14, Arkansas 13. The executive producer, of NCAA football is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the Louisville Bowl was produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedaris. Technical director, John Allen. This Saturday, Christmas Day on ABC, remember to watch Wide World of Sports and see the 10th anniversary show featuring highlights of our first decade. Next Monday night at 9 Eastern time, watch the North-South Shrine game from Miami. Our thanks to our spotter, Bill Friel, and our statistician, Jerry Kapstein, Chris Shankel speaking along Bill Fleming and Bud Wilkinson saying so long from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. The Liberty Bowl has been brought to you by General Motors and the people who make Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, Opel, and GMC trucks. The cars and trucks with the GM mark of excellence. By the Polaroid Corporation. By Tipperillo. We really started something. Regular, menthol, and aromatic. And by State Farm Mutual. Almost anywhere you drive, there's a State Farm agent nearby. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This has been an ABC Television Network sports presentation. Enter a miniature world of insects that bears a remarkable resemblance to the larger world we know on Land of the Small, narrated by Gregory Peck. Tomorrow night at 8, 9, 8 o'clock Central Time. It's part of a whole night of specials here on ABC.